Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets in our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Parrish, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. And remember, there's always just a Cash App link there, as Lil Hellfire says over and over, so. Cover her moving costs, kids. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to episode two of our two parts Wonder Man special. I am Phil, because you can't get rid of me. Uh, joining me again is. Well, right below me is Justin the Owl Osgood. And then we also have Sector 2814's Will Allred. Hey, everyone. And, of course, you know him from every podcast on the planet Earth, Mr. Ray. The High Priest of Sausage himself, Ray! Hey, how you going, everybody? Kind of feel I kind of feel like, you know, in the credits in the movie that I, I tend to get the with tag at the end, you know? I yeah! To get the, yeah, thank you so you much. You know. It's special awesome. guest appearance by. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always say, I mean, I don't think you're a Star Trek fan, Ray, but, you know, he's always at the end of the next gen. Oh, and, you know, Brent Spiner as Lieutenant Data. <laughs> 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 but, yes, the... Well, of course, again, you're the high priest of sausage. Of course, you're going to get that top billing. And this is a sausage It is indeed. <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> I love that show. Again, I—I I mean, as Noel told me, people come to for just, just Justin's laugh. So sorry, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, throw it in. <laughs> All right. So yes. If you haven't listened to episode one, go listen to episode one. But <laughs> yeah, what are you waiting for? But this- oh, Justin. By the way, before we get into it, oh, oh yes, I looked it up in the Bible. Ooh, oh yes. my word! <laughs> wow. I only have Wonder Man at class ninety five. Class ninety five. Oh. Yeah, that surprised me. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, but I, that, I don't. I feel like that's changed since then. Yeah, I think so too. I I, I, I feel he's. You know, up there with uh, Thor and, and her. Yeah, you know, in the, that's what the I always thought. Yeah, because didn't thought. didn't Luke Cage start out as like 30, 30 tons or something? Now he's like class one hundred as well, or, or close to it. Yeah, he's amped up. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I think Spider Man's like ten tons or something. Ten. Yeah, just yeah, same, same only ten. Oh, yeah, only ten. <laughs> I think Carol Danvers started out as yeah, maybe like twenty five or fifty, and now she's class one hundred. Yeah, exactly. Some. How much you bench, bro? <laughs> or just 10 tons. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right. So, yes, we're covering the rest of the Wonder Man series, 16 through 29, and everyone's favorite annual number two with Hitmaker. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I left that to last to read. <laughs> the first and last appearance of Hitmaker. That was so <laughs> weird because it's kind of seen, I think it, officially kind of sort of takes place after 25 but he was mm-hmm. kind of almost it, talking like he was still working for blackheart spoilers it's like yeah it was yeah. weird it was like it, it to me it looked like they were trying to shoe it in somewhere in the middle of the hidden depth yeah story. Mm-hmm. Like, it was almost between... I, I almost feel like they didn't know exactly where it was going to land so they were just like yeah, yeah let's cover our asses and just you know throw out a bunch of references to current well, wonder man stuff poly bag because of course it did with a trading card, right? That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, this entire summer. Villain on the card. I think he's a villain. Yeah. And oh, this yes. This entire summer, yes. that's what they did. Yeah, they, every they, annual they, they had tried to every introduce. Every single annual had a new a new character, and they were usually villains. Mm-hmm. And they were all polybagged with, with a trading card. Oh, there my go. goodness. Yeah. <laughs> if he ever makes it to the MCU, Phil, you better hold on to that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, Ray. We were talking about slabbing comics, man. If I can find... I have a few of those cards. I should slab those cards. Slab those cards. Yeah. Hitmaker. Dearie, man. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I was going to. 
I was going to say that that that, that was bad. Like Justin said, that summer, like every annual, they introduced a new character. And I don't know if any of them stuck. Really, mm. I don't think so. I was trying to think of any that had lasted beyond that. Because there was yeah. one in a Spider-Man annual, like was it Annex or something? It was like a guy with Annex. armor who could like call up weapons and stuff. I think he might have made one or two other appearances. Now that, that was and that was like the one who you know made it big out of that event. Mm. So. I think they threw a lot at the wall in the 90s, character-wise, no. I feel. Um, yeah. <laughs> and just, I don't know, I can't even think of any, do you think of any characters in, the, no, I mean, Deadpool is the big one, right? Yeah, the, um, Deadpool, Cable. Uh, and Cable, yeah. Oh, well, sorry, Gambit as well. Yes. Yeah, I mean, there are a few, there are a few. All mutants. A lot of X characters. Well, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I mean, if you wanted to make it big in the nineties, man, you kind of had to spin out a Spider Man or X Men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I just had to look up a list of them: uh, Annex, Bantam, Darkling, Blood Ray, Cadre. Blood, actually, Blood, Blood Ray. Right, yeah. Blood Ray's yes. returned because he had the ebony sword of the Black Knight, so he actually came back a few times. And he was cool. The, I like Blood Ray. There's Executioner. <laughs> oh yeah, he did show up in some oh, of the X books. Him. Yes, yeah. yeah now was, cool. I, I think he that was the most a, successful one. Yeah. yeah, he had like a potpourri of a bunch of different alien weapons. Wow, <laughs> uh, there were twenty-seven of them. Ooh. Wow. Oh, my oh, Lord. you know what this was? This was them them competing with that. Remember when DC did that that bloodlines when the alien the parasites blood. would bite yeah. people and create oh. new metahumans? Yeah, that's what okay. they were competing. That's exactly what it was. They were competing with the new blood stuff. Hey, and here's a cheap trick song, The Flame. All right. <laughs> the Flame, that was the Thor annual. Yeah. Phalanx, oh Irish gosh. Wolfhound, Chaos, K H A O S, Nocturne Not- Raptor, oh, that Night Terror. Bell. Yeah. Oh, wait, hang on. Okay, you guys are, you're not going to believe this. What? Legacy. <gasps> yes! Okay. Yes! Yeah. Genus! Genus fell! Yes! The Silver Surfer. That's right! Oh. There's your most successful one off that list. Yes! <laughs> he got 220. Oh, wait. He got he got six issues in the 90s and then 225s later on. So that is the most success, successful off that list. Wow. I forgot about that. Yes! Genus fell. Oh, I had to. I told, I was just looking at the. Ch- wait a minute. That can't be right. I had to click on it to make sure that it was actually Genus fell. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. The minute well, Royal said, You're not going to believe this. I was like, Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one too. Yeah, I almost forgot about that. Yes, the clone son of Captain Marvel. Although I still have a little bit of grudge against that series because they made fun of Quasar in a letter column. Hey, I'm petty. Okay, oh, I'm a petty man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Peter David. Oh, uh, there was a some, was it was there a Nocturna or something? There was a Nocturne. Did you say? Not, Nocturne. Yeah. Nocturne. Was a, yeah. Is that the yeah, was that the girl with the wings? Because I I know she's yeah. later showed up in like another Spider Man story or two. So yeah, she. I think she was a police officer, a detective or something. So I'm trying to remember if he created her, but I know she showed up later in like a JM Dematea story or two. So yeah, okay. You know, she she was cool too. What? Two or three out of twenty-seven. That seems about right for the batting average for most of these events, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The nineties. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with the new blood over at DC. I think only two or three of those stuck. Uh, yeah, Hitman. I, I love that series. Oh my god, yes, I love <laughs> yeah, Hitman with the uh, yeah, basically Ray Punisher with like telepathy and X-ray vision. Oh wow, <laughs> okay, sounds pretty good. Pretty dangerous, actually. Uh, again, you ever my wanted to join the JLA. The only reason you went to JLA was to see Wonder Woman. Yes, I love that <laughs> issue. That issue five. Yeah, they're like you're not. They told him to get X-ray. out. He's like, he's like, no, I'm good. I was in, the, I was in the same room with Wonder Woman in my X-ray vision. I'm good. <laughs> and I was a Grant Morrison issue too. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I guess it, it all just points to Hitmaker not, <laughs> not being that good. Yeah. Um, again, yeah, nine, batting nine average, these. as you say, will. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty, pretty low. Pretty low. And again, Genus fell. He, I mean, he, they spun him off of, of another Marvel, you know, characters, the son of another Marvel character. So that's probably why he got. Yeah, any now, traction is, is off the back, back of that. Now, yeah, isn't he? Well, yeah, they did. Oh, yeah, they did it. Yeah, they're doing it. They're in the middle of a Peter David miniseries right now. Yes, yeah, yeah. Two issues are out so far. And you never, you in, and you never believe how the they. Guardians? Uh, what? Sorry? Did he feature in the Guardians? Before? Nah. I can't remember. Uh, no, Quas- no, well, both Quasars were in the Guardians no, and Quasar, haven't yeah, been yeah, seen yeah. since. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sorry, Phil, you about this? Oh no, I was going to say you don't never believe how Peter David brought him back. Made another clone body and stuck his uh, no, memories in that maybe. clone body. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it works. I mean, it was originally a clone anyway. Why not? Yeah, well, yeah. Let's go with it. 
All right, so let's get to these uh, Wonder Pig. <laughs> let's get to the rest of the 90s. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, it was weird how they, like, ended. Like, I mean, I guess because 15 was, like, part of the Infinity War. Or, yeah, the Infinity mm-hmm. War crossover. So you could, really couldn't have, like, a definitive ending on it. But it kind of, like, faded to black, almost like he was passing out. And then next time mm-hmm. you see him in 16, he's back home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a bit of um. I'm surprised. So what was it? A- I'm surprised there wasn't. I was I'm sorry. I was gonna say I'm surprised there wasn't like a uh, editor's note. Oh, hey, see Infinity War number six oh, yeah. to find out how right. we got back yeah, yeah. here. Yeah, that, yeah, that would that make would sense. Help. Yeah. Yeah. But so, what was the cover of Phil on sixteen? Oh yeah, yeah. That Shirtless one. Wonder yeah. Man. Yeah, that's a good stuff. A little evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's a continuation, so, isn't it, Will? Like he's starting to really um, embrace his savage side. And I guess if you go evil, you lose your nipples. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Vestigial, anyway. He's ionic. It's okay. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Get off to his form. That's right. to go away. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I mean, lost my nipple for nothing. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to ask you guys a question. Oh, boy. About Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity War, and Infinity Crusade. I. It felt like an infinity, yes. Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, Phil and I have talked about this a lot, and I, and I, will, put, I will put Cosmos and Collision against any Marvel cosmic. Mm. It is the best Marvel cosmic, bar none. Infinity Gauntlet gets a lot of talk, yep. but and it's got great art by George Perez. I mean, it, and, and Ron Lim, mm. okay? Yep. It's, it's it's good, but again, it I feel like it plays it plays into the, the, the whole wish fulfillment of it, in that it's, oh, we're going to do really bad things. And guess what? None of those bad things actually happen. Ha ha! Yoink! <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I still feel like Infinity Gauntlet's still good, right? Mm. I don't know that I feel that way about Infinity War or Infinity Crusade. And I'm yeah. curious what you, how you guys feel about those. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I think that gets, those gets more traction than Cosmos and Collision because Cosmos and Collision was mostly a uh, Quasar story. I you know, forget the uh, mm. Ghost Rider cameo. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean – Again, Infinity Gauntlet got traction because if you have a favorite Marvel character, they were probably in that story. And then once those movies came out, that helped. But uh, yeah, I mean, Infinity Gauntlet wasn't bad, but then Cash Grab number one and Cash Grab number two that came after it, it's like, Ooh. yeah. I I um I thought I really enjoyed Infinity Gauntlet when it came out because for me, again, it was you know seeing your heroes all come together and seeing them all die, which was kind of novel, you know, in that sense. Yeah. Um, Infinity War when it first came out, I absolutely, I really didn't like it. It was, it was right on the nose, Phil, as you say, of being a cash cow, like just a cash grab. Um, but I've actually, I mean, <laughs> I am, I'm just going to admit that when you guys covered it at, at the Quantum Zone, um, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> like, uh, maybe it's because it was like reading it alongside your coverage of it, but. Uh, rereading it again, I I thought I would hate it, but I really I really just dug it because I I guess I knew what to expect and I knew it, it wasn't going to be like Infinity Gauntlet. It was going to be this whole take on doppelgangers. So yeah, I actually really really like it now. I uh, can't say the same for in- Infinity Crusade though. I think that's just a mess. Um, so I. I'd still hate it. <laughs> well, like Infinity Gauntlet, it seemed like they yeah. they were a little more subtle. They didn't ram it through every book. Infinity War, yeah. I mean, they jammed that into Infinity, every Marvel yeah, book. It was, yeah. it was you couldn't get away let's from it. Let's kind of squeeze that dry as much as we can. But, I mean, looking back on it, it it's, just, it's a nice little time capsule of the time, um, of the 90s, and it's just it's, it's, it's just fun. I mean, it's overextended, but it's it's fun. Um, but how about you, Justin? Did you, did you yeah, like I, it? I love the Infinity Gauntlet. I still love that, but yeah, the Infinity War, like I said before, that that was when I actually stopped reading this series because I just I was so over it by that point. <laughs> I think that if it had come maybe a year or two later, I wouldn't have felt that. But because it had come so quickly after Infinity Gauntlet, and then with Infinity Crusade, like I think a year after Infinity mm. War, it was just like oh, another one, great. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah, I I agree with you, Ray. I, I can't stand the, uh, Crusade. I thought that was so ridiculous. These these groups of heroes join oh. this messy and I crusade like this nah, yeah. yes. and that damn Adam Warlock right well <laughs> yeah and, and I, that was another thing that bothered me about Infinity War was the Magus being the villain again it's like oh here we go again with this you know mm. this evil duplicate of Adam Warlock coming back again the mm. evil side of Adam Warlock again I feel like we've gone through that enough well I guess they feel yeah. like couldn't press their luck and make it Thanos again 
Yeah. Right, yeah. He had a good, like, he, he rounded out really well with Infinity Gauntlet anyway, so it would be a travesty if they did just kind of bring him out again. and Yeah, yeah especially so quickly after that. Yeah, especially, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. What are these guy gardener issues? We can't get to them well. <laughs> <laughs> we always say if we have lots of great issues we're like ah the conversation always steers to something else it's like but no yeah this is where we get like the dark turn you know when yeah, it's a really yeah. dark turn i mean i like it, that yeah. it got really it got dark at the end of infinity gauntlet in number 15 you know because he rip rips his head yeah. right off you know? yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah. it does get really dark here i mean it starts here and it just keeps yeah, just progressively just mm-hmm. gets he, he he goes down that hole further and further. Um, I can't remember ex- exactly there. Um, Phil, sorry, um, for sixteen, uh, sorry, fifteen, sixteen, fifteen, sixteen is the first. Sixteen. One, yeah. What what happened um, in that particular issue? Was that still with um, Anchor? No, no. This I mean, they basically start start showing the violence that's going on. You know that Lotus got yeah. that as like all the gang going. Oh yeah, no, uh, it's yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah. Wonder Man doesn't show up until like page eight, and then he just shows up in that apartment building, and his landlady's like, "Oh right. wait, you know where have you been?" And he's like, uh, "She's like yeah. the city, the city, it's going crazy. All this violence." He's like, "Violence? They haven't seen anything yet." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that's one of the things as well. I, I think that Gerard Jones wasn't afraid of. Um, I'm not sure if it was that particular issue, or there might be another one where you really you don't see Wonder Man for a large portion of it. Yeah, um, and it's he's not afraid. Needs. Oh yeah, that, cra- yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that crazy that crazy eight issue. You bear. I don't think you see him at all, do yeah. you? Yeah. No, Maybe but like he's in, just in flashback as well. But he's, Jones is just not afraid to take the titular character out of it and just let the supporting characters do all the kind of heavy lifting, so to speak. And it still works. I mean, it's because he set them up so well. I think. Yeah, because you start um, to see some of them. Uh, yeah, manifesting those powers. Okay, yeah. I, I have yeah. a question for you guys. Did Wonder Man kill that gang member? Oh, well, the whole thing where you see the punches coming down. Yeah, that was dark. I wondered about it? that too. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because you don't really see an outcome after that. I and and the arm's shrinking that. too, so it's like, is he yeah. losing power? Or, yeah, it's. Yeah. And, and the Avengers don't, you know, bring him in for murder at that point. So I, I yeah. my thought was, you know, he just beats him to a pulp. You Maybe, know? yeah, comatose. Yeah, but yeah. I, I didn't know if I was reading that right or hopeful you know being just hopeful that you know they didn't just turn him into a murderer you know <laughs> mm. might be ambiguous i, I think you uh, yeah it's a good point well because uh, as you say the, the avengers would have done something if, if you did cross that line so maybe maybe that was it maybe yeah i don't it. think because yeah because charlie yeah. and i were just talking about some thunderbolts issues last night and i uh, remember when hawkeye takes over the thunderbolts like he makes uh you know, Mach 1 go to jail because he's like, oh no, we can't have murderers. Uh, you know, heroes don't kill. I'm thinking, oh, yeah. this is late ni- uh, This is late 90s, huh? <laughs> I mean, go, by the yeah. same token, <laughs> by the same token as well, like, death is so much more desensitized around this this yeah. time as well. We've yeah. seen, like, you know, innocents and civilians just get trashed um, oh, yeah. already. So, from the, yeah. from the mall, anger in the mall. From the, yeah, yeah, it was just, yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, that, that a particularly dark moment, I think, uh, Will. Um, there as well, uh, but yeah, I th- I th- yes, right. I forgot the Avengers kind of make a, okay, and he goes up against them as well. Mm. Yeah, was that was that during um, Hidden Depth or was that be- right before? I thought that was what, maybe before. before? That. Yeah, because okay. there's a cover with him fighting them, right? Um, what the oh, yeah. the Avengers? Yeah, 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 yeah. seventeen, yeah, seventeen. Oh yeah, yeah there it is. Yeah, yeah. there's the living lightning. Living lightning, living yes, lightning. he's so yeah. cool. Love yeah. Lightning. I love how he zapped him. Like he actually did a lot of damage to to Wonder Man um, yeah. the first time. But then one, <laughs> I think he ends up howling and flying away because like Wonder Man just sprays him like with water. With water. <laughs> water <yeah. laughs> I'm not sure. Not hey, what sure. Do you mean? Like, electricity and water are like that. Yeah. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Great combo. And of course, yeah, every- that was one of my favorite issues of this of the second half of this run. Actually, was that one where he was fighting the Avengers. Mm. It was great. And everyone's favorite punching bag U.S. agent. That's oh, right. yeah, 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 yeah. He does get a few kind of hits on him. Oh, uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, that's, as you're saying, we're starting to see the kind of, uh, this is around the t- same time, right? We're, we're getting really into him just embracing his, his savage nature, just being um, almost kind of like personality-less as well. Mm-hmm. He, he becomes really kind of robotic. Just um, a walking rage generator. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
And then yeah. eight, uh, issue 18, you're not a successful superhero until you've quit and threw in your uniform in the trash. Ah, and yes. Right, and walked away. Yeah. I remember that um, cover. Just going, was, oh, yeah, was, that's Did so Jeff cool. Johnson do that cover, or did, did somebody else? Um, it says... Oh, it must be Jeff Johnson, because it says JJ after JR. Yeah, okay. oh, Nice, oh, yeah. yeah, after JR. <laughs> John Romita <laughs> Sr. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good because that's when we start seeing more of the crazy eight. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. They start. Um, that's right. There is some weird things happening. Is that the time where Jamie she talks about she's having a dream and there's that cat outside the the, the sill? Yeah. Um, there's a snapping. Then Ginger gets it. What? What is that snapping? Is that just kind of like I took it as like boom boom, like a little bit of an explosion that she yeah something like that. Generate. I think that's what it yeah. seemed to be. Yeah. yeah that's- Kind of what I thought it was too, and then Spider mm-hmm. cloning himself. Oh, that was cool. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love that yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, because I mean, we get a whole uh, crazy eight issue in nineteen. Which, what did you guys think about the whole sideways issue thing? Oh, it was yeah, cool. It was kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, something different again, and. I mean, it looks, it looks like you're reading a dirty magazine the whole time. But <laughs> exactly. Imagine reading that on the bus or something. Yeah, on the train. Well, you know, and this is something that. I would assume was, you know, the writer's idea. Uh, it could be wrong. It could have been, you know, the artist. But there was also probably around the same time as this uh, a completely silent issue of Guy Gardner, except oh. for one one word at the end, you know, one one bit of dialogue on the final page, which was, I think, next, because he's just fighting, yeah. fighting, just taking on all comers and just beating the crap out of everybody. And then the final page was, <clears throat> was just next. I mean, I, I feel like the writer was, you know, doing some experimentation. I think yeah. it's really cool to just try, you know, sideways issues is a whole different animal, right? <laughs> mm. Yeah. Be a nice challenge for the artists as well, like, you know, and uh, an opportunity for them to try something different. Yeah. But, oh, yeah, I, I think it was good. Yeah, because we do a splash page. It goes sideways, sideways, too. Yeah. Because yeah. sideways yeah. really isn't in that story at all. So, symbolically, it's oh, oh, Crazy 8, Sideways 8 is infinity as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Oh, but they, they do throw in, uh, you know, when his uh, landlady Gloria, uh, you know, she, she time travels and so she time, time travels travel. to the future yeah. and sees uh, stuff from Hidden Depths. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That was cool. I like yeah, that, that was good. Lot. Yeah. It was fun to find, discover their powers, like, mm-hmm. slowly. Um, there was, who's that filmmaker? His one was a bit weird. He had, like, visions and stuff. Yeah. Oh. Theme. Mm-hmm. See through buildings, or see through walls, or see through yeah, stuff. I, yeah. I mean, they're all kind of like, but put them all together, they, they're pretty fun. Like they're pretty good, but some of them, are, you know, I would take the cloning power over the X-ray vision any, any oh, day. Oh, of course, Mister Fan of Madrox, the multiple <laughs> man. Yeah, of course you would. <laughs> yeah, but, the blonde um, girl no, made the, me laugh too. That's yeah, what her name was. What was what was her deal? Because yeah, super because she. He wasn't sorry, Justin. She's speaking like a homie or something. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was the deal there? Yeah. This little blonde yeah, dancer yeah. girl. Yeah. She, yeah. yeah. She's like, oh, I'm street, yo. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. She's just throwing down with the rampage stuff. Yeah. That's nah, just good. And Alex had the pro- mental projection, yeah. which he used pretty well, like a, mm-hmm. um, a few times. And, and again, I loved how. Uh, Ginger had someone in the business that could actually drum up some costumes for them. Yeah. Yeah. So that made sense, you know. Oh, issue eighteen. Yes, that famous line. Yes, I have a, uh, I had a uh, what ex boyfriend or something. I'm sure I yeah. could suck a deal out of him. I'm like, wait, yeah, wait, wait. That's it. That's it. You I'm, that read, I'm reading. I put like, it down. What? I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, I wonder yeah. if anyone else yeah. noticed yeah. that. <laughs> exactly. Does anyone else use that in any other way? I I I've never heard that saying like, in that either. context. You know what? And I feel like an idiot. I ju- it just hit me. Yes, ginger snapping power. So ginger snap. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 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 That's I I like Jamie's one as well, which which is the dream. She almost basically Doctor Strange. That's how I put it. Like she just astral project. But it's um, weird, but she has to fall asleep, which would be hard. Like I mean, later on when her mother gets hurt, it's like oh, I you know I'm yeah. all in a panic, but I have I to fall, fall asleep. asleep. Yeah. yeah, I gotta go yeah. get Wonder Man. Right. Yeah, cool. so that's and it. And her range was pretty limited too, because yeah, oh, yeah that's right. Know, where they were doing Macbeth, I guess maybe in Colorado or. Out in the hill, or I, I didn't know. Uh, Somewhere else, you know, not not in California, I don't think. I thought maybe, maybe I thought maybe Nevada, because didn't, yeah. or. Yeah. 
but she was starting to cloud away like right when she reached um simon and she could only get like words to him um so yeah yeah because was that was that when was that when she tried to reach him because alex got stabbed by ran um, well yeah, and it, oh, yeah. yeah they're getting yeah. attacked by splice and rampage so yeah and then alex yeah gets stabbed so yeah she tries to do uh, that was shocking as well was I, I was kind of yeah. mm, i was pitting like okay alex is a big a big kind of support cast member but i could very well see her just be killed off you know um so it was there yeah. It was, it was quite a big moment. Okay, here's I'm a dead. here. Oh, sorry, I was gonna say here's a question. Do you guys think? I mean, this was the '90s. Do you think they were trying to spin off like a Crazy Eight like miniseries or ongoing book? I, I think testing. that's always in the back of everybody's yeah. mind, probably. Yeah. <laughs> See how well it goes. Yeah, I mean, because they had the design, like the artist, you know, had a nice little co- cohesive design for all of them, and they're all kind of quirky enough. So yeah, I definitely could have seen it um, as well. So I have. If I remember right, Gloria travels to the future when Simon's made it back, but he's made it back too late. But then she takes him back to the past. Yeah, right. yeah. Because <laughs> I was, I, I went. Wait a minute, what, what just happened? Uh, I just... <laughs> <laughs> Some crazy time stuff happening there. Yeah. Wasn't there something with Splice as well? Like he sees himself. Was that Splice or Gloria? He sees himself walking up the stairs. And... Yeah, and then we get it from the other yeah. side later yeah. in the issue where he's chasing himself because she. Told him to so well talk. done. Yeah. yeah, it was it was very well done. I was just like, whoa, wait a minute. There's a lot going on here. Kind <laughs> yeah. Of <life." laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, that, um, yeah it's was... the beginning of 21. Yeah, because he shows up. Okay. And the cops are like, oh yeah, they're all dead. And it's like, wait, well, it's like, oh, awkward. Cool. Because yeah. I don't know if his powers are fluctuating again. Because he said he he's been running across the de- uh, like the desert or whatever. Mm-hmm. Not That's leaping. Right. He, yeah, I'm assuming. Yet. He, yes, he can't fly yet, and I'm assuming just because he couldn't trust his jumping ability, mm-hmm. so he just had to run. As well, and and that's the thing as well that comes out of it. Uh, Jamie gets really uh, hateful towards Simon because of you know you you meant to help us and all this, and you're off. Um, oh, I can't remember total reasoning, but you know basically he wasn't there to, for yeah, Alex. He, he, aban- um, he abandoned all of them. Yes, yeah, these were his enemies, and they were coming out too. And he yes. blasted them all and gave them these powers, and, and then he just turned kind of took yeah, off. Yeah, well, that was it. Like that level of responsibility. He, he finds out that he was responsible for not only creating the Crazy Eight, but he had a hand in Ankor and all that, mm, all because yeah. of his ionic energy. So he's got a lot to take on board. Um, yeah. Mm. yeah. What did you guys feel about that twist? That it was his ionic energy that was the cause of all this stuff. I, I mean, I later. Was, I mean, oh, good. I, I thought it was really. It really got at the core of, of him because he caused all of his own problems. Mm. You know, it was his lack of confidence or his lack of, you know, not wanting to face up to his past. It was all of his problems were caused by him. And, you know, they were internal problems. But I think I thought the ionic energy was a good way that those were all externalized. You know, boom. Yeah. Because you, know, you had to mm-hmm. deal with another rage monster. You know, you had to deal with your friends, uh, you know, being attacked because they were trying to fill in for you, you know, when, and mm. you, when you abandoned them. So I thought it was a really good, good way to kind of get at, especially where he was, you know, at this time in the series, you know, because he was still mm. in a really dark place. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. What do you yeah. Think? I, I, yeah. I think the ionic energy was just um, really well used by Jones here, like really exploring what you can use with, I mean, cause at the, before this, it was just him basically being powered or, or being ionic energy, so he was just strong. But now we got him externalizing that ionic energy, causing um, or influencing others, uh, as well as as you mentioned, will like later on we find out he can fly, um, he can regenerate um, his clothes, you know, because they're, it's all it's all just energy. So I love how Jones explores the possibilities of ionic energy rather than just being this base. Um, it's you're just made out of energy. You're powerful. Um, mm. so yeah, but everything as well, what you said, Will, um, how it's integrated into these issues that he has to kind of deal with as well. I, I just think it's very inspired, um, inspired writing. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Hey, but yeah, it's just that, you know, kind of wrapping up in issue 21, I mean, well, Lotus, you know, who's, who's whipping a city council member, uh, <laughs> send, sends, a, like sends, it? sends all those, those armored arm response guys, you know, trying to stop yeah. them when they're taking Alex to the hospital. And I love when Simon's just like, 
you might be able to kill us all, but if you don't, I will kill you all. Are you sure yeah. you can take me? Yeah. <laughs> and you, and you see those guys me. like, yeah. uh... <laughs> and you know, he's, I don't know that he was bluffing at that point. Oh, I don't know. That's it. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think. I mean, he had this woman he loves that, you know, bleeding out in his arms. He's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, you know, um, you saw, I was waiting for that line. It's like, you keep me from saving her life. Yeah, I will kill you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's another thing that you raise as well, Phil, with armed response. So that was a, a nice little fun kind of, um, I don't know what you call them. They're, I mean, because they're, they're, like they're private be secu- like, like private security. They're, but, yeah, yeah, but they're, but they're bad, you know. I mean, because yeah. they, they first they're come across as, okay. yeah, but they, they kind of come across first as being authority and, and yeah. keeping things in order, but they're actually pretty, um, pretty rotten. Um, so yeah, well, it's that, ba- that it's ba- it's basically you know protection racket, but it's you know because she, yeah. she's like, oh, you know, people who pay for our service don't have to worry about uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but initially, I I thought them just because the way they looked and there seemed to be so, uh, so much order in them. I, I just immediately took them as okay. This is like I don't know the the, the guardsmen or something. You know, something mm. a lot more. Thing, but yeah, they weren't. They were, they were very much just um, in it for the money. Um, well, and you know, yeah. it's it's funny how. You know, the 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 single hit you know villain from issue what five mm-hmm. that rampage tech permeates the series yeah and the mm-hmm. annual that we're going to talk and about annual, you know, yeah. with, with true with you know uh, you know Justin and Ray's favorite character hitmaker <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh we didn't oh we culminates in hitmaker <laughs> we didn't even bring that up last episode from issue five and six you mean rampage and his recession raiders. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, the recession <laughs> raiders, yeah. Oh, yeah. Two of which appear later on in this. I know. I, I'm surprised they tied that back in. I'm like, wow, yeah, because two of them that's get cool. away at the end of six. I'm like, whoa, yeah. they you yeah. Yeah. forget yeah, about those guys. That's really, this is almost. I mean, if you read these 29 issues and you read the two annuals, you know, everything is brought back. Now mm-hmm. they, they couldn't deal with Spider and Jamie keeping some of the power back. You know, oh yeah, they, they do. They do. That's right. But everything is is so contained. I mean, you know, of course, we have the crossovers with the Operation Galactic Storm and Infinity War. But even those issues speak directly to everything that's going on in the series at the time. Yeah. So I mean, it's just it's so well done. This would be in a this would be an awesome omnibus because it's so yeah. contained. You know. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. It's just it's just really well done. I can, it's such an odd like two annuals. And finishing on issue twenty nine, it just seems so mm. abrupt. But mm-hmm. Jones still manages to kind of round it off. And as you say, yeah, a couple of loose threads. Like, yeah, you re- reminded me about Spider and, and Ginger. Just saying, <laughs> oh, did you keep? Yeah, I kept a little bit too. Uh, I'd be interested, like any modern day current writers, to you know plumb the depths and and bring out Spider and Ginger. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, and I, I mean, the, the first half of this series is great, but I mean, like you well said, we had all these crossovers. Do you guys think the second half is maybe kind of keeps a more even keel because we don't have to deal with all those crossovers? Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I would agree with I that. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's much more it, cohesive. Yeah. Well, I would, I would argue though that I think the art is more cohesive in the first half because we do mm-hmm. have some fill in by yeah. our artists yeah. in this in the second half. You know. Mm, Past yeah. twenty five, you know, we have a new team. You know, I, I get that, but yeah. Yeah. there were a few fill ins, I think, where Jeff Johnson doesn't do the art, and I don't. Were there fill ins in the first fifteen? I, I don't remember. Maybe right issue. Now. What was that issue? Was it twelve? Oh, sure. Eleven or twelve? I think had a fill in, but besides right. that, I don't think the rest of them. Were, I think Jeff Johnson did the rest of them. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I think I think the through line in the second half is, is definitely a lot more. Th- there, although exactly just say will, I mean, they are it all is really well tied together. But my inf- my first impression of the first um first half would be one of you know the first few issues were all um standalone villains, you know, like a villain of the week thing. So mm. there was that which kind of gave it a really nice uh, that was really nice, I think. Um, but then tying it with Lotus and and all that, you know, she she you know it masterminded the whole thing but whereas you know we get into the well, hidden depths and we get into the savage wonder man and that all kind of even towards the end with psych out i mean there there is a nice little connection um because that rounds off that kind of is wonder man finally kind of accepting and, and starting to master his powers so i think yeah it's a lot more cohesive in the second half um, but just different tone mm-hmm. And and you could really argue as well that with um, Jones having to go in this direction 
that the quality would suffer. Like because he did say, I think he said the first six issues were his all time favourites to write at, at the end. Mm. Like he just absolutely loved that, and that's what he wanted to continue throughout. But he was, you know, during, due to marketing reasons, he was um, asked to to take a, a darker turn. Um, but I still think he does a really good job um, with it. So. Yeah. So I wonder why the darker take was just because it was the '90s. I, that would be my guess. Yeah. yeah, honestly. Yeah, I mean, they were saying that uh, he was saying in that thing at the end that it was just too lighthearted. There was a little bit of criticism, but like it, it's too humor humor booky, um, which I yeah. I didn't pick up at all. I thought I it had a yeah, nice mix of action. Yeah. Great. Yeah. But yeah, uh, purely nineties. Nineties was was dark, wasn't it, Phil? Yeah. That's all about the angst. <laughs> back yeah, back and then, especially so. at this time, like ninety three, yeah. ninety four, this was super yeah. angst, angst city. Like, yeah. If I remember right, it was darkness all over the place. Darkness and pouches, my friend. That's right. <laughs> exactly. And no feet. <gasps> no feet. No oh, feet. Big yeah. giant guns. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Wonder Man had to um, compete with Punisher. You know, Wolverine, Ghost Rider. Ghost These Rider. were the big, yeah. the big yeah. ones. Um, so, yeah. Oh, if so, anyone yeah. ever does a 90s podcast about 90s comics, Darkness and Pouches, there's your title. There you <laughs> yeah, go. Exactly. exactly. Well, you know, yeah. and I think that to bring this to, to Quasar, because everything comes to Quasar, right? <laughs> exactly. um, <laughs> you know, I feel like that's kind of what what doomed that series ultimately. I mean, you had, you had this great, you know, it's Mark Grunewald the great Mark yeah. Greenwald writing yeah. this. And then you had you know, some, some really good artists, you know, Paul Ryan and Mike Manley. Then you have Greg Capullo. Mm-hmm. They're doing, you know, 25, I don't, I don't even remember how many, 20 issues, around 20 issues. Something, of the series. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I feel like part of it was, you know, Greenwald was actually commenting on a lot of that stuff. He was commenting on it in Captain America that he was writing at the time. I think he was commenting on the, the dark turn, mm-hmm. you know, that a lot of comics were taking at the time. Yeah. But I think that, you know, ultimately it killed Wonder Man, the Wonder Man series, and, you yeah. know, it killed the Quasar series, too. And then, and then plus, too, by the time you get, oh, was it by 97, maybe? Once, you know, once the bankruptcy starts happening, you know, the bubble burst, the yeah. bankruptcy yeah. starts happening, and yeah, again, here... Again, Heroes Reborn's coming up too, so I think that affected any Avengers titles and stuff yeah. too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Spider Man as well. You, you, get, you get the Dark Spider Man around the nineties as well. Oh yeah, right. The Spider. I, I have Spider, and then yes, then yeah, you get yeah, some yeah. Uh, clone nonsense. You know, that was supposed yeah, to last three mu- three months. Does he lasted get the two years. Armor during this time because that just makes so much sense. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's Web. Of, is that yeah? The Web of Spider Man. It was it. It was in the nineties. I well, yeah. <laughs> no, it had that foil embossed cover. Yes, Web one hundred. Daredevil yeah. got armor too, so you know. Yeah, got armor. That's so. true. <laughs> yeah. Even Moon Knight got armor in the nineties. Everybody. That's true. Armor. Yes. Quasar didn't get armor. Darn it. That's true. Yeah. Well, he didn't either. He didn't well, either. we kind of armored up in during Infinity, uh, Infinity War. War. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he had like that light, that that cool quantum armor. Yeah. 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 But I mean, the the I think one of the main arcs for this second half of Wonder Man, obviously Hidden Depths. You mentioned oh, it before, yeah. Will. I think in the previous episode about how, how all those four covers kind of come together, and mm-hmm. it really culminates with one of the main things. Obviously, Mephisto getting his toe in, you know, <laughs> or his finger in the pie, but having that whole retelling of Simon Williams's origin and his relationship with Eric, his, yeah. his brother. Um, that was really cool, I think. Uh, almost a re- it was a redemptive kind of arc for, for the Grim Reaper. Um, well, to- you know, and it didn't, you know, typically you're like, okay, hey, this is a Spider-Man book. Let's have Mephisto as a villain. Mm-hmm. Sorry, no, that doesn't make any sense. And I, yeah, I totally chose that, I guess, not at random. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, having Mephisto be the villain in here actually made a lot of they made it make a lot of sense you know mm. oh hey we've got a human that we can torture forever yes right? <laughs> and because he's immortal and it, i was just like whoa that it didn't just come out of nowhere let's just throw my fisto at it you know yeah no exactly yeah it, it was quite um it was good wasn't it wasn't it the fact that he his soul regenerated or something so it was almost like a limitless mm-hmm. supply of souls for, yeah. for mephisto and i thought that was such a cool idea uh, and then we start getting this because um, Jones puts it more and more in the issues 
we start getting that reiteration that Simon Williams is the immortal protector. And I love that kind of angle for, for Wonder Man uh, because, you know, give me anything like Highlander or, yeah. you know, Eternal yeah. Warrior from, from Valiant. Um, but whenever you get immortals, they're so cool because, you know, although Wonder Man is super powered, the fact that they're immortal is just, oh, I love that kind of thing. So, yeah, he was, yeah. All right, not to so, take us too far off course, but yes, Web of Spider-Man 100 with the spider armor was May 1990, 100. May 1993. Ah, there you go. And, you gentlemen, rejoice. I'm making Lil Hellfire do an episode on that in December, so. Oh, yes. nice. All right. The spider yes. armor. Spider Love armor. It. Lil's, Lil's <laughs> going to be watching this as she's moving, going, what the F? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, you know, yeah. I really, Hidden Depths was just such a good arc. Oh, yeah. It had it's great so art. The only thing that I I didn't understand, mainly because I probably wasn't reading the titles, but but Blackheart, I didn't really know. Oh. I don't really know much about Blackheart. Okay, but I, I do like how Jones tied it in. You know, they it was he made it about family. You know, because mm-hmm. you know this, you know, the son versus the father. Yeah. Um, and you know, kind of, at, you know, toward the end, they can't break out of their roles. They have to do what they have to do. Whereas he was actually breaking out of that role and letting go of the past. And I mean, it was it really made a yeah. lot of sense. But I just really. I don't know much about Blackheart, so that that was a that was more me probably. I guess I knew enough from what. I mean, he's basically it basically Mephisto just created him, and you know, basically becomes the rebellious son. You know, it's mm. okay. like he, he's progressed a lot since um, his inception. But I I remember him just earlier on. Uh, uh, I think with Anasenti's run of. Um, of Daredevil, Daredevil. And there's a bit there's, wasn't it? yeah yeah, yeah she cre- she created him I think uh, as well yep uh, but there was this issue with with Daredevil and Spider Man and that's the first Blackout appearance was yep. predominantly yeah he was predominantly like silent and he, he was kind of really kind of scary in that sense but um over here in, in Hidden Depths he seemed to be a little bit more animated and uh, a bit of more conventional yeah. as a figure well that issue where he's called quiet with them yeah, that that was like his first appearance so he's, yeah. he's technically kind of like a newborn evil yeah so yeah, yeah. Th- yeah. at this well, point it's just a baby oh yeah, yeah. at this baby point. evil <laughs> baby evil I'm, I'm trying to baby evil. evil I'm trying to remember at this point <laughs> he might have had <laughs> yeah at this point he might have run in what was it Ghost Rider or somebody so I mean it's, mm. it's yeah, Ghost yeah, Rider he appeared in the, at the very end of that 90 uh, series oh okay yeah. well that'll be yeah. I, I, so how did see and I don't know really where the last time we left off the Grim Reaper is just Boom! The Grim Reaper and yeah, Blackheart yeah, show remember. up, and I'm like, okay, cool. We're just gonna go with it. Right? <laughs> I think the last time the Grim Reaper had appeared before the story was in Avengers West Coast. Yes, so yeah, yeah. Called the the Reaper and the Robot. When he's working with Ultron, yeah, he joined forces oh, with Ultron. Okay, and that I think was like in the sixty a it, year or two. Yeah, it was like in sixty, so it was like issue sixty something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it had been a little bit since we'd seen the Grim Reaper. But I mean, he, we brought in. And they brought in Talon, mm. right? Oh, they yeah. brought in man. Oh, yeah, Talon, yeah. Chicken, oh, the, chicken uh, man! Masters of Evil, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Talon, that's right. <laughs> yeah. big rooster. And, uh, Goliath <laughs> which, came back. Yeah, and Goliath came back, oh, which is yeah. funny because, you know, I'm a I'm an old school Avengers fan, so when I think Masters of Evil, I think the Mansion Siege, right? Mm. Yeah. You know, just yes. this massive army of super-powered villains. Um, mm. and, but... That was like the fourth or fifth iteration of them, but it's it's always the iteration that I come back to. Mm-hmm. But this, yeah, this was too. interesting to see, you know, this previous iteration that had so much to do with, you know, Wonder Man's resurrection, you know, around yeah. that time. Yeah. So it was, again, I thought it was really cool to bring them all back. Yeah, I mean, paying respect to the again the source material and the history, it's it's great. It's, whenever a writer does that, it's really um, fulfilling. I think. Mm. Um, and how, how about that Goliath the showdown with Wonder Man? In 25? Yeah, when oh. Wonder Man's like, oh yeah, I can alter my form too, so he starts growing yes. too. Yeah. So he grows as well. Yeah, yeah, but Goliath just grows too big, so to speak, yeah. and he just disappears. Yeah, like, do we know what happened to him after this? Because he, ha- he we know, of course, he has to come back yeah, for Thunderbolts. Well, I be- mm. I believe when they do like an origin for the Thunderbolts thing, I forget if it was issue zero or something, but I believe Zemo and Fixer find him in like another dimension. So I don't know if he basically oh, wow. just like uh, vanished just into another s- dimension or something. Slid yeah. into another. Yeah. Mm. Wow. But that was cool as well. So yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so weird to see that character behaving like that when he's he's not that any. You know, he's he's 
in the Thunderbolts, and he actually chooses to be a hero, you know, yeah. and, and save uh, the, the Thunderbolts around that time were just, well, I mean, you had, we had Busiek and Perez on the Avengers. We had yeah. Busiek and Mark Badley on the, uh, on the Thunderbolts. I mean, it was just a great time to be reading, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm trying to remember because I think at this point, I me mean, he might have been ionic and might have had some pin particles in him or something. And then by the time Thunderbolts roll around, they're like, "Oh yeah, your system's kind of flushed a lot of that ionic energy mm-hmm. out, so you're basically more pin particles than ionic yeah. energy." Yeah, yeah, because he makes mention that he and um, Wonder Man were cut from the same cloth, so to speak, mm-hmm. in the series. So he definitely had that ionic kind of connection. Yeah, um, because but- he was. Power Man, I believe, right? Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. He was. Yeah, that's yeah. right. He and the smuggler. And the, sm- <laughs> the smuggler. One of the, the all-time greatest villain names ever. The smuggler. Oh, and Jeez. of course we can't forget Hitmaker. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Hitmaker. Come on, Phil, give me, give me the, give me the rim shot. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, no, it, it was really good. Uh, again, you mentioned um, Justin about him using his ionic energy to grow as well. So I, I love this kind of him really starting to understand what he could do with his powers. Um, doesn't he also, it might have been in the early issues, doesn't he like heat vision someone as well or he, he blasts someone with, or was that when he turned the crazy eight people in there? I can't remember. And I, I thought he, yeah. It was think in he, number 25. Oh, yeah, I think he did hit. Yeah, and cause he, he did hit just so commenting on it. You know, you know, he's learning. You know, yeah, he's understanding and he's learning and he's doing these things. So the potential. So it's such a shame. I don't know now if he's just been relegated back to just being a, a strong guy. Um, well, it's kind of weird. Last I saw, he was a pacifist, right? He was a pacifist. This was ages ago, though. With yeah, um, well, yeah. it's weird because I guess Ray hasn't read Force Works number one. I mean, he, he kind of basically gets blown up in Force Works number one, and he's gone until. Yeah the Avengers come back from the Heroes Reborn and the Scarlet Hero Witch is sure. able to use her yeah. powers to like kind of bring him back. And he's like yeah. more energy at that point. But I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, cause like last I saw him, I think it was in, a, this is a while. It was Avengers, uh, no surrender or, or no road home or something. Remember those oh, ones? Oh yeah. yeah. Those runs? When they were doing like weekly or something. Yeah. Yeah. And they, um, they bring Wonder Man in to try and, uh, I think stop the Hulk, but he doesn't want to, like he doesn't fight. He, he's taken a stance of being a pacifist. So I don't know where he is now. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. yeah, they he had him. A, wasn't uh, wasn't wasn't the writer who turned him a pacifist the one who turned you off of Avengers books? Will Bendis, Bendis, Bendis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yes, it wasn't. It was no longer for me. Um, mm. I, I'm not gonna comment on. I mean, I think Bendis is a good writer. I just think yeah. that. Uh, well. Like Lilith and I said, maybe he needs to be a big picture man, come up with the idea, and then give someone else the idea to execute. Like, maybe that editor or something, you know, something like that. Yeah. Well, but I, I mean, because I, I started reading Avengers back around 220, 200, yeah, 200. Like the Roger Stern there. stuff, yeah. They used to have these things called subscriptions, and you could get your comics mailed to you. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. Um, did you cut that out of the back of your book, you heathen? <laughs> oh, yeah, do not do that. <laughs> I don't think I did, but... Um, Ultimately, when, you know, I did not, I was not a fan of what happened with Disassembled. You know, I just, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, it felt, yeah. it didn't feel like the Avengers. What, Hawkeye and flying headfirst into a spaceship? You know, I think yeah, that was... And, uh... then, and then New Avengers, it wasn't, it was a, I mean, I get it. It was a, hey, we're going to turn the Avengers back into what it was when it first debuted, which was all our best-selling characters in one book. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. cool. Wolverine, Spider-Man! But the <laughs> Avengers had not ever really been that since Cap's Coopy Quartet, right? You know, yeah. like only a year or two into the, the book. So why that would why that would be something like changing the personalities in Moon Knight's head. Who would do that? <laughs> <laughs> I see a common thread here. <laughs> That's what I said. Bendis always comes in and tries to reinvent the wheel, it seems like, at least in his modern stuff. And it's like it doesn't always need to be reinvented. Well, yeah. and so, you know, I, I stuck with it, but then at the end of Secret War, no, Secret Invasion, at the end of Secret Invasion, I was like, I, I can't do it. This is not for me. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to comment on whether it's good or bad. The art is brilliant, you know, and maybe, and, and I'm sure people like it. So great. I guess it, I guess I'm the pro- for me. I guess I'm the problem because no matter who I'm podcasting with, I thought I thought I could blame Lilith, but whoever I'm podcasting with, it always comes back to damn that Bendis. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and the thing is, I've missed so much Avengers since then, you know, because I just have never got 
back to it because it never seemed like it was the Avengers anymore. You yeah. know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm in the same way. For me, it was Civil War. It was when the shift took place for me. Mm-hmm. For me, if you look at the entire Marvel timeline from a distance, you can definitely see a tonal shift take place right oh, yeah. around Civil War. Oh, yeah. where it was almost like, gee, the Ultimates worked so good. Let's incorporate that into the regular Marvel Universe. Uh, yeah. It will work mm-hmm. great. Let's just yeah. do it. Let's <laughs> kill all the new warriors off. Let's mm. make speedball a cutter. Let's do this. <laughs> you know, what could possibly go wrong? I mean, yeah, yeah I don't. Yeah, I, I will go on record as saying I do not like Civil War. I, 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 oh, yeah, I, I don't either. I, really I mean, I, idea. I, I, yeah. I think it reflected badly. I think it has aged poorly. I don't mm-hmm. think it, it. I don't think it. It marked a really good shift for Marvel as a whole. Again, you, I, yeah, like you guys were saying, Bendis comes on Civil War. I, you could argue the starting point, but there's some point in like the early to mid 2000s, you could definitely feel a shift in the all the whole Marvel well, line. And, and I really shifted away from a lot of Marvel books, and I was reading, you know, I was reading Guardians of the Galaxy and Nova, you know, which mm-hmm. were really by, I don't want to pigeonhole these writers, but they were considered more DC writers. Right, mm. you know, Abnett, Abnett and Lenning have Abnett come over Lenning, from yeah. the Legion, yeah. right, and, right. And, and and did a lot of deep a Resurrection Man. I think they had done mm-hmm. several books for DC. Yeah. So and, and I, I was mean, reading, and they were space DC books, yeah, and and, and yeah. space books at Marvel, and that was basically it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but speaking and of they, great characters, Hitmaker, <laughs> <laughs> this Hitmaker, and so. It, it all comes back to Quasar, right, Bill? Um, <laughs> you know, they, they killed Quasar in you know Annihilation, mm-hmm. which don't get me started on how. Ultimately, scene was handled you know, very poorly. Yeah, yeah. The, the you know Abnett and Lanning brought him back in Nova, and then you know that was transitioned to Guardians of the Galaxy, so that you know we, we got. We got Quasar back, which was cool, and yeah. I just felt like those books were kind of an island unto themselves. Mm-hmm. They didn't really traffic with what was going on in Marvel Earth with the whole Civil War stuff and and everything else that was. You know, I, I think it was at this time that Iron Man revealed his secret identity. Oh, okay, yeah, he yeah. Saved yeah. a dog. I think it was. It yeah, was, it was around. I was like, "What?" It was around 2004 or something. And I I just took that as a, so like Tony Stark's like, "You know what? I really don't need a secret identity." You yeah. know? I mean, yeah. I get it, but it was like this story. What? I, I, uh, okay. <laughs> Micro. Yeah. Sorry, that's my old man rant. I'm done. <laughs> hey, that yeah. Four old men. He uh, uh, Again, yeah. I mean, we're old men because, like, you know, you can make fun of the '90s pouches and everything, but it's like I kind of feel like you know, at some point after the turn of the century, I don't know, they kind of lost something in mm-hmm. these comics, you know. And, and I have a, I have a theory about what they lost, and I, I really, it was Mark Grunewald. They lost. Oh, movie. true, yeah. true. When did, he pa- like when did he pass? 96 or something? 98? 95, 96? Oh, 95. It was 96. I think it was right before 96. the boys were born. So, right. Um, I, I feel like he was kind of the soul of Marvel, right? Absolutely. And, the heart and soul. Absolutely. And then that bankruptcy true. hit, and they were just like, oh, hey, I, I almost felt like, hey, let's, yeah. let's throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, also as well, remember, Phil, when we did speak to um, the likes of Terry Kavanagh and Howard Mackey, yes. they, were, they were saying that when Grunewald was there and the the tone in the Marvel office was very much kind of like the bullpen, you know, it was yeah. fun, it was, yeah. but it was corporatized later on. And, and that might have been because of the, obviously, the, the bankruptcy and stuff. So that sh- may have had some impetus in, in like, oh, or yeah. some effect or influence in the shift of the tones of the comics and yeah it, it's quite noticeable um yeah those good old days were a lot better because i think it's gotten <laughs> even further and further away from that because i think i bet yes. i think now a lot of them work from home and probably just yeah, like send stuff exactly in and stuff. you don't have that kind of physical face-to-face the the hijinks i mean there were stories weren't there um where um they would mail someone's possessions to an oh that was doug men she was saying he was telling us how for a joke, um, they would mail someone's possessions to like another state. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, so the guy turned up in the Marvel office. Always my stuff. Oh, it's in Nevada or whatever. <laughs> 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 so, 
So you know, they get into a lot of jokes and yeah, but you'd lose that. Obviously, um, no more face to face. I'd say everyone's working from home now, which is a is a kind of a, a a good and bad thing because we get so much great talent from overseas. Like there's a lot of Spanish yeah. and South American artists that are just amazing, which they wouldn't get back in the day. There'd be a lot more local local talent. Um, but there's a lot more variety now, but you just don't have that kind of yeah because the distance yeah you're not they're not going to mm. be in the office and stuff yeah. yeah. But I, I think you know with with technology today we get not as not as good as being in person, but we actually get more interaction uh, yeah. you know with those people yes. because you know we the, do. the technology yes. here which we didn't have the tech you know back you know in the early 2000s to, to mm-hmm. do a lot of the things that right. we're doing now. Oh yeah, because uh, like Ray like on. Uh, to know her is to fear her when I, uh, you were talking to Carla and uh, Parrot. I mean, they said they would like jump on Zoom and like, you know, and like yes. have discussions. You know, she'd be like, oh, what do you want to draw? The, you know, what do you want to draw? Yeah. And you'd be like, oh, monster trucks. Oh, it's not. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It can be. I mean, they, they were great. They love to work with each other. And yeah, I mean, they, it can work. It doesn't mean it's automatically difficult. But um, yeah, I, I think what you guys highlighted like a shift in in tone around that time was very much to do with the work dynamic and i don't think you have to be in the office because i never finished it but i know lil said something about it so i watched a couple minutes on uh, i saw it was on disney plus i don't know if it's still there there was a special on dan slot and he would come into the office and they're like he would like he would always be late on deadlines meanwhile like the whatever i forget what artist he was working with was like traveling the country in a van would still hit his head his uh deadlines <laughs> but slot who actually came in the office could not hit his deadlines yeah, it's like okay yeah. So, yeah you don't necessarily get all the work done if you're in the office yeah. um, but i mean towards the end of uh wonder man we've got we got two uh i know the hulk two oh, sorry two-part hulk yeah i was gonna say yeah. the was there a question at this point? Because it just seems like, yeah, the last two arcs were just guest stars. Hall, two page mm. Hulk, and then two issue mm. Spider Man. I wonder if I they knew what... the writing was on the wall about the Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, After probably. 25, they probably knew. And then it was just kind of like, let's let's slowly put the brakes on the mm. series. And how could we kind of yeah. still try and get people coming in? Hulk and Spider Man, I mean, yeah. staples. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and, but it ends so hopeful. Mm, I mean, it, it does. Ends on it does. A hopeful yeah. note. I mean, it's from your know, twenty-five ends with this. You know, hey, I'm immortal. Mm. I'm really powerful, and I'm going to do everything I can to you know usher in the future. I'm I'm here to protect the future. And then five issues, you know, four issues of the series done, and then Force Works, where he's the sacrificial lamb on the you know the, <laughs> the mm-hmm. beginning of a new series. Oh, it's all <laughs> kid gloves are off. You yeah, know, like, oh, Wonder Man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, Okay, whatever. <laughs> you feel like that's almost like undoing all the hard work that Jones has done to build up this character. It mm-hmm. seems like a slap in the face. Right. Well, I wonder if I that was. I, I didn't know if that was part of the cancellation too, because like they knew that was coming, so they're like, "Yeah, you right. know, we'll, we'll let you tie it mm-hmm. up." But yeah, the mm-hmm. the literal axe is yeah. coming. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But, but I mean, there's. Yeah, sorry, Phil. But no, I did. I did like these last four issues because it, it's like yeah, he's like you. unlike other superheroes, he, you know, he, he's come to grips. I am immortal. Let me help mm-hmm. try to help save the Earth because I will be around for mm-hmm. hundreds of years. I mean, as we've yeah. seen Guardians of the Galaxy, thousand years. Yeah. It's yeah, right. you know, I can watch yeah. over humanity for the next how you know, however many centuries. Yeah, I, and I got I got a lot of vibes from Peter David's Incredible Hulk. I don't know if you got that. With oh, because well, going Hulk, over yeah. to a, a foreign Definitely. country to try to help out. Yeah. Um, so Wonder Man now is, is added into the mix and it was fun. I mean, uh, again, kind of throwaway villains. Is it, is it Furor or something? Furor, yeah, Furor, Furor and yeah. Plan, Plan Master or something like that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the guy in the chair. Yeah, Plan Master, yeah. Uh, which we don't know. It's a bit ambiguous. Father, son, father, daughter, something yeah, happening there. Mother, There's a connection. Mother, son. Mother, I, son. I, because there yeah. was a little bit of uh, conversation about the gender of yeah yes yeah yeah um but yeah that was that was good enough i mean that was good just to see and and they do address it i think um jones has wonder man saying at the end oh we'll meet again but next time we can um finalize or confirm who actually would win between wonder man versus hulk which i thought was cool because (laughs) yeah kind of like the hulk and and thor that's uh, for me that's always been a question because wonder man's such a big hitter um Mm. So that was fun. Uh, well, I think. Well, I think that even the meta commentary, Hulk even says in the one issue, he's like, "Oh, you know, you know, I'm 
you know, it always happens. Guy gets his power levels jacked, and it's like, oh, can he beat the Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you've got the Hulk thing fights, you know, that have been going on for decades yes. at this point. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, that was really good. And then and then the Spider-Man one, um, which I, I thought Psych Out was quite a fun villain, actually. Uh, mm. Similar to Mysterio in the sense, just a lot of yeah. uh, illusions. Um, what did you guys think of like his reveal? Because it was kind of like, oh hey, yeah, I can't remember uh, this, what some background guy from like issue two or something. It was, yeah, I think it was the, the Tyrannosaurus Rex or something. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> yeah, he got disgruntled and he wanted to. That was so funny. Like yeah, again, just tying it in, all all tying the, everything. What, yeah. What, yeah, which again, so, which is good. But like I was reading these, and I forgot how it ended. I was at first, I was like, is this going to turn out to be Mysterio? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first time um, I was like, "Oh, it's like a Scooby Doo moment." He's like, yeah. "I would have gotten away with it too if it hadn't been for you meddling kids." <laughs> yes. And how about as well? Did you, that ultra meta um, monologue by Wonder Man at the end? Yeah, at the I end, really yeah. enjoyed that. It was. That was literally yeah. just Gerard Jones just speaking yeah. to us. We got to look over um, favorite characters and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, so cool. Yeah. I so that. I just yeah. Again, that that's those little things like that just make this series because uh, you know you know we're speculating about the writing on the wall and how it was during the time and you can imagine him just writing that, um, thinking yeah. all these things like in his head about like I love this character, I've loved writing it, I've had to go through this roller coaster of a ride of having to change the tone of it. Um, and now it's going to end, and, and so he, he's kind of put that into the series. Which, and it's you know, and it's even more depressing in the Force Works thing because at the end of like twenty nine, he's like talking to Alex, you know, oh yeah, do that movie, and then he's just like, you know, hey, we're gonna we're gonna get married, maybe hinting around, yeah. oh yeah, there yeah. might be a ring yeah. in your future, yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh god, yeah, jeez, and then the Force Works work dead, and the, oh, yeah, cool. I was gonna say, I don't know if we ever see her again, unless I'm trying to remember, was there a funeral for Wonder Man in Force Works? I can't remember. I don't remember either. I don't yeah. know if we've seen any of these supporting characters. Yeah, because I was going to say maybe there. I can't remember. But other than that, yeah, I don't think we've ever seen any of these characters again. Yeah. I reckon in the TV series, I'm hoping that they will inject uh, it, more than just the names of the characters. I'm hoping we do get, you know, oh, you your know, Ginger, your Alex. Your, I was going to say, yeah, probably those two if no one else. Oh, Spider. Oh. Yeah. Spider. Get Spider. spider. Yeah. yeah. Because the only, the only, uh, confirmed casting for that wonder man series so far as uh yes uh ben kingsley's trevor is coming back yeah that's right oh, right yeah. that's true how cool is that so that ties in with trevor <laughs> so, <laughs> so is he gonna be like a big hollywood guy oh my god can you imagine if he like wins an academy award or something trevor i just like <laughs> i want to i want to oh we're I'm totally okay with us not talking about Hitmaker in the second annual. Um, <laughs> but I do want to get into Justin's uh, list yep. of characters or, or of actors to play. Oh, I, yeah. I yes. thoughts, and, and I want to see what you guys think. As a man, as a man who prides himself on knowing about hot actors, uh, yes, Justin, please go ahead. <laughs> Just, Justin, yes, lead us off. Well, well, I immediately I saw a rumor the other day that Henry Cable was being attempt to play some undisclosed part in Loki season two. And I immediately thought, oh my God, if he plays Simon, I'm just going to lose my mind. <laughs> um, so that would be my number one pick. It, it's too on the nose, I know, because he's done super, I get it, but I don't care. He'd be perfect. Um, other than that, I would also, I saw a, uh, I shared it with you guys too in the chat. It was a, a fan make uh, mock-up that somebody did of uh, Tom Ellis from mm. Lucifer. Uh, and I thought that looked good too. I was like, you know, I can actually see this working. Um, and beyond that, um, I've been waiting for Mr. Taron Egerton to make his appearance in the MCU. Ah, people have right. just talked about he's going to be the next Wolverine. I don't really <laughs> believe it. Um, yeah, he would make a lovely Simon Williams. He would be good as well. Well, what yeah, about that yeah. name that was floating around before? What, what did you think about John Hamm? Bit, bit old. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. 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 Same really thing with Nathan good, Fillin. Maybe. Like, because yeah. anymore, I think I think they like to 10, go young. Years ago. Yeah, yeah. So they get like tw 10, 20 years out of him. Yeah. Wonder Man needs yeah. to be. He needs to look. I think yes. mid mid twenties, right? He yeah. needs to look young. Yeah. And vibrant and look like a himbo, right? I mean, yeah. right. He needs to look like <laughs> exactly. Well, I, yeah. I totally agree. I, I think uh, John Hamm has the look. He's got that kind of dashing look, which I yeah. think Henry Cavill's got the same. Kind of, you know, square jaw, very kind of the Hollywood. Classic. They, they Hollywood. Too. I mean, you know, yeah, they, yeah. they have the look, but that yeah. was, 
again, 10, 15, yeah. 20 years ago, I think, for, mm-hmm. for those guys. Yeah. How, how, what did you think, Phil? Um, Will, sorry. <laughs> Will. <laughs> you know, I really, I, I don't know. Um, right. I, the 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 actor that they've tapped to play Guy Gardner in the Green Lantern Corps series that supposedly is still ongoing at this point, I, who knows from the Warner Discovery or whatever they're calling it these days, but I think he has kind of the, you know, that, what's what's his name, Phil? Do you remember his name? Who? Uh, the guy that they tapped for Guy Gardner for the Green Lantern Oh, Corps um, is it Flint something or? I think so. I mean, he's got that kind of, you know, mid-20s, look i think that you know hollywood look that i think would be good but you know i really don't know um i've got i've got one here that i've just put up now i'm not sure and i don't know if this was from capes and lunatics i don't know if this was uh you phil and lilith talking I can't remember. i was listening to it in the car on the way home and someone mentioned um pen badgley uh, oh, uh he's from oh, you, you. Um, uh-huh. yeah hmm. and he was in gossip girl i think as well he's dark hair um, he's kind of kind of got a square jaw. He'd, he'd probably need to beef up a bit more. Um, but I thought he I'd, he'd be a pretty cool Wonder Man. I don't know. He's I don't. He's only what I think he's under like five six five eight. Oh yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think he's. I don't think he might have the height for because I, I feel no, like. like uh, yeah, he would need be, to be. Uh, yeah, six but feet, right? but, the, but the, oh, yeah, he's got to be. Yeah, he's got to be like. But the one Will was talking about that. Yeah, Finn Whitrock, uh, the guy Gardner actor. Yeah, I mean, I I could see that. He looks young. He's got the dark hair. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how tall Finn he is, but Whitrock. yeah, F I N N. Yeah, W I T T R O C K. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. From American Horror Story as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, I remember Finn. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've got to have. For Simon, though, you've got to have – he has to have the himbo look, but he's actually yeah. got to be a really good actor because he has to also act badly. Yeah, you've got to be a well-rounded <laughs> actor, yeah. And he has to be yeah. good enough to be able to be bad, which has got to be difficult, right? Yeah. I, I reckon Henry Cavill could pull it off. I mean, like, I just saying the obvious, but um, he's got he's got the, the physique, um, and he's, he's a good enough actor to, to do that sort of stuff. So, and he, he, I mean, him playing a himbo would be so hilarious, especially yeah. after all the other roles that we've seen him in, like The Witcher yeah. and Witcher Superman, and, Superman and, yeah. and yeah. like all this other stuff. Like seeing him play like a Hollywood himbo with superpowers <laughs> would be so hysterical. It would be great. Yeah. I think it would be successful. Well, I you know what they say: you either die a DC character or live long enough to become a Marvel one. <laughs> 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 well, it's like Ray was saying the other day. It's like they're keeping DC's keeping a, a perfectly beautiful beautiful limousine in the garage yeah. a ferrari they're never taking exactly. it out like, whoa ray <laughs> <laughs> no well, yeah i mean for sure like he's, he's he deserves to i mean if, if they made more superman movies then i'd be all for it keep him in there because superman is a huge iconic superhero and someone the caliber of henry cavill you know he should have that don't waste them by number one just not doing any superman movies or number two but i'd be disappointed if he was in marvel but as like there was talks of him being hyperion hyperion that's right yeah which i thought would be a little bit of a waste because he's not that bigger character wonder man i think is a lot a little bit bigger than hyperion so uh, yeah you don't want to waste waste. and again that that would be weird too because hyperion's basically a marvel version of superman so yeah 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 Yeah. maybe (sighs) captain britain he was um touted for captain britain as well yeah yeah brian Braddock. Um, Ooh, yeah. It would be pretty cool. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. Hitmaker. Hit he could be Hitmaker. I don't know. I hear a lot of good names. I don't, I don't, I don't know who could. Uh, yeah, who could play Hitmaker? <laughs> <laughs> I got it. The um, the uh, What's his name? Uh, Gabriel Luna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Hitmaker. <laughs> That's who I was thinking when I was reading that issue. Uh, not not nothing against Gabriel. He's great. Uh, just the kid. <laughs> <That'd> <laughs> be great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they kind of went way too far. Like, yeah, we need a, like a character in Hollywood, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then what about that splice backup story, which had nothing to do with Wonder Man? Yeah. Basically, yeah. just yeah. nothing at all. There was another good backup one too with it, the Living Colossus. Oh yeah. yeah. I didn't read that. Admittedly, I got to um, check it out. But yeah, that was good. That was fun. Yeah. yeah do not destroy it. If Fifty million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> <Check that out. laughs> uh, all right. So, anything else, gentlemen? No, Just final thoughts a, on the series. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is a really, 
really, really good series. Mm -hmm. I mean, the art alone from, mm -hmm. from Jeff Johnson puts this, you know, up there as a good series. But then the writing was just really, really good. I mean, mm -hmm. I know we got a tonal shift, but it didn't didn't seem it didn't seem like, oh, we're just flipping a switch in this issue. It, it grew out of the stories that were going on. I mean, Operation yeah. Galactic Storm was a big deal at the time, you know, and and to have that be the catalyst for the change of the series, you know, really makes a lot of sense. And mm -hmm. and then Hidden Depth, even with his mom not being dead, <laughs> was, <laughs> uh, was, you know, putting everything in the crucible that had been, you know, leading up to it. And then we get a stronger, better character out of it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and then to have that character who had, you know, you know, been a weapons maker and, you know, been a living weapon himself and, you know, all of these things that he had gone through to come out still very hopeful and, you know, deciding that I'm going to be here to protect the future of this planet because I am immortal and I'm going to, I'm going to live. I'm going to try to make sure that everybody else can too. I mean, it was, it was worth the journey, right? Mm -hmm. it, it really was a, a good series. And I feel like I, you know, like Phil said, it's, it's unfair to punish the other creators that are involved with this series. Yep. Jeff Johnson did amazing work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of the other artists were good too. Um, yeah. Ron, yeah. Ron Randall Tim, showed up in the last couple issues. Of yeah. Tim, mm -hmm. Tim Hamilton. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. and, and all of the, it's such a good series that it's a shame that it's not in print so that people can actually read it because yeah. it's it's good and it does a it does a great job making Wonder Man you know that much better at least mm. from from what I read yeah. and remember yeah because it's not a big time even uh, commitment because you had a, even added in those two annuals that's only thirty one issues I mean exactly. right. right and it's It'll tight fit enough in an omnibus. Yeah, yeah, it would. It would. Yeah. And it, it's tight enough to work as like a collected omnibus or a collection mm -hmm. to read it. I mean, Will, you read the whole thing as you said, yeah. um, just yes, in one right. hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it works. It's not like it's all disjointed and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it, it is such a shame. And I think it's a hidden gem. It is absolutely a hidden gem. Um, totally underrated. I'm glad it's getting some attention with the upcoming TV show. So hopefully, hopefully we'll get something. You know, at mm. least if it's on Marvel Unlimited, because it, at the moment mm. that's all kind of sporadic, isn't it? Um, it just deserves a lot more, and it, it's a shame. And we spoke at uh, last episode about Gerard Jones as well, and and what he has gone through, and you know why that the the series has been tainted. And yeah, it is unfair um, that the other creators would have to suffer from that. But um, yeah, I, I absolutely love this um, series, and it, it's. I think he couldn't have done any better to refresh Wonder Man, to revitalize the character. Uh, but then again, the slap in the face with Force Works, as you guys said, <laughs> it's just, oh, my God, gosh, what's going yeah. on? I, yeah, I, I read that last issue. I'm like, man, this is really good. What yeah. this, What happened next? And it was like, oh, yeah, Force Works <laughs> number one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, because they yeah. kill him. You know, he's yeah. the sacrificial lamb for the launch yeah. of the new Dark Avengers called Force mm. Works, right? Mm. So the new Extreme Avengers. That's right. Well, they're not going to kill Iron Man. He has uh, he has yeah. a book that's still going. So yeah. yeah. And then you know, it would be what two or three years, I guess, until you know, Avengers number the volume three. You know, the Avengers mm -hmm. uh, Heroes Return. Yeah, yeah. By uh, Kurt Busiek and George Perez. Like ninety eight. Yeah. The Scarlet Witch would bring him back mm -hmm. 98 or 99 i guess yeah somewhere yeah. in there mm -hmm. so he wasn't gone too long but uh he did miss Heroes reborn. reborn so maybe it was for the best yeah, it was <laughs> a blessing in disguise actually. yeah probably yeah Again, I don't know. Again, I don't know if that was just they wanted an excuse for why no one would restart it in Avengers, even with those main ones missing at the time. So you know, because they yeah. they pulled all kinds of crap. I mean. It, all, I mean, they were slaughtering characters in the 90s. Wonder Man, Thunderstrike. Yeah, with like Mockingbird. Of, oh, Mockingbird. Yeah. yeah. That was, I like that. And they had done a lot of work with, I mean, I, I always, I know, you know Mark Grunewald was a huge fan of DC. And he loved Green Arrow and Black Canary. So Hawkeye and Mockingbird mm -hmm. got together. Yeah. But I, mm -hmm. I always, you know, and, and Steve Englehart wrote them in, a, you know, the West Coast Avengers Limited series and then the West Coast Avengers series. I. <laughs> You know, not rape should never be a plot point, mm. okay? <laughs> and yeah. 
that. Especially the way it was handled in that yeah. story. Yeah. Which was not not great at all. But her and Hawkeye, I always, I always liked them together. You know, I yeah, me too. It, was, me too. it, it worked. Me too. And then Secret Invasion, she's back, but they don't get together and there's other things and Ronan and blah, blah. I don't, I don't even yeah. know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I just see Ray writing down, read more Mockingbird. She's just like Black Canary. <laughs> <laughs> Mockingbird's great. Oh yeah, I yeah, mean, I love, uh, I love the uh, the Martin Grunewald, you know, written and drawn. Oh, uh, Hawkeye Limited, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. which was just this great little. Again, uh, it has a nice, you know, he his life crashes around him, and then there's this great scene where he's, you know, not hit the target. You know, he's been trying to hit the target all night. He goes back, and there's no air. Finally, he's out of arrows. And then some guy tries to mug him. Suddenly he's got a bunch of arrows. But you know, we'll just go over that. But, um, <laughs> Gloss over that. But yeah. that's you know that's where he teams up with her, and you know they don't really like each other. And he, it's also where he you know causes himself permanent hearing damage. You know, mm-hmm. which they don't necessarily yeah. refer to a lot. You know, yeah. in in the series anymore. But you know, it's just such a great little series. I remember reading that. And just, loving it well it's so yeah. it's it's so weird because i think they kind of cured it after heroes reborn but then i think they gave it back to him in another fight so it's kind of uh, it's <laughs> kind of skype it yeah well you know it's if you get a chance to read the the fraction uh david Aja, mm. yeah. Oh, yeah yeah it's, it's fantastic it's brilliant yeah. I mean, it is it, really good yeah the, the things that that they're able to do you know oh. pizza dog yeah, you know, no, it's I'm a fantastic, <laughs> fantastic run. Oh my god! Okay, anytime Lil's on vacation and the wheels are spinning in my head, I'm like, we're doing. Z- I'm hearing ideas for more episodes whenever <laughs> Lil goes on vacation. <laughs> oh, forget Wondercast. Solo, <gasps> Solo Avengers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Solo, Solo Avengers. Solo Avengers. It's the name of this. Yes. Name Jim of Lee series. did a Mockingbird story in the first issue, so take that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we get out of here? We're going long. What is what is this? The last sons of Krypton. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yes, kids, thank you for joining us again. Next month, Lilith will be back for more Daredevil. Uh, and again, you'll see, find these boys all over the place on our shows. So, uh, but send us your send us your nineties comics thoughts, Wonder Man thoughts. Uh, email us capesandlunatics at gmail dot com or call the voicemail six one four three eight two two seven three seven. That's six one four thirty eight capes. And remember, you can find all the uh, social medias for all our shows uh, on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, find links to the YouTube channel. Smash that subscribe button so you don't miss a second of any of our episodes. Smash it! And Patreon, where you get early access to creator interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats. I got the good mic out for you guys. And superhero movie brackets, because Lilith loves pain. Uh, <laughs> so all that for your bang for your buck and merch. Find it all at linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash capes and lunatics. Uh, how should we do this? All right, let's do the reverse order this time. Ray Ray, where can people <laughs> find you? Um... Best way to find me is through Twitter at Ray Ray Pod. Uh, on the live stream, you can oh, on the video you can see here um, at R E Y R E Y Pod. I'm happy to talk about anything comics and film and TV. Um, but that's got links also to the podcasts I do: Into the Night, the Moonot Podcast, Tanoa is to Fear Her, Spider Woman Podcast, Last Sons of Krypton, a Superman Podcast. Uh, end of the month monthly tenure over at Capes and Lunatics with Phil and Dave doing Scarlet Spider. And the new one, Predator and Prey, a Yaucha podcast, all to do with Predator, uh, with Justin. So exciting times to be a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so smooth there, so fluent. <laughs> well, I I'm sorry, you, you went oh in the middle. I'm sorry. <laughs> the big bazooka. The spider babies. All right, Justin, uh, where can people find you? Well, as, as Ray said, the aforementioned Predator and Prey. Oh, uh, we, we just dropped our second episode of Lovely Chat with Viner Ed Bresson. And I can also be found as the co-host of Gamma Charge, the strongest podcast there is, where we talk about the Hulk and She-Hulk, and also Tomes of Evil, a comic book supervillain podcast, where we talk about the badass. And I will be joining Phil very soon on We Are the Night, the Batman podcast, once a month. Yay! Uh, 
tap, tap, tapping my way downtown. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mr. Will Allred, where can people find all your stuff? Uh, you can find me at Walred, that's at W-A-L-L-R-E-D, uh, at Gmail and Facebook and Twitter. I mostly hang out on Twitter, and I think I've probably got other social media that I don't even remember setting up at this point. But uh, <laughs> You can also uh, check out my... Uh, self-published work via Kickstarter, uh, Crossover Division, which Phil has right there, which is pretty awesome. Thanks, man. My um, name's in it! <laughs> <laughs> CrossoverDivision.com uh, will point you in the right direction there. Uh, you can also check out Diary of Night at DiaryofNight.com, which is another book I, with uh, artist Gene Gonzalez. I also uh, hang out with Phil every week. He hasn't gotten sick of me yet. Uh, we no. hang out at Spectre 2814, the... Right, the Green Man <laughs> podcast. All right. <laughs> uh, I also uh, co-host a show called Explain Yourself on every Friday night, where uh, Kickstarter comic creators come on and we uh, discuss their ongoing projects that are currently live on Kickstarter. So that's a lot of fun with uh, writer Kevin Joseph. And then I uh, have this little site called the Quantum Zone, where you know, obviously, if you like Wonder Man, you're going to want these are too because come on, these are some good '90s theories, right? And uh, you can find out everything you want to know about Quasar at quantumzone.org. He goes limp I think when I grip. Off. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's going somewhere nice. They aren't even attempting to enter our offices. <laughs> That's <sighs> the best one right there. That is, I they, we that was a read through. Oh yeah, those those yeah, those live get. reads get such gold. They aren't even attempting again. to enter our offices. <laughs> <laughs> I am God. Star Blast. Yes. Star Star Blast. Star Blast, just like herpes. The gift gift, gift that keeps on giving. (laughs) I am God. It was so just on Star Blast. Oh, Oh, we did too many on Star Blast. (laughs) (laughs) We did every episode issue of Star Blast. That's too many. Uh, Even the ones that were numbered wrong. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the end, I, I didn't care about. I know. By the yeah. end, it's like poor part. Who gives a crap? Who gives a flying crap? <laughs> part question mark? Question mark? Yeah. Part. Are you still reading this? Yeah. 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 It's like Netflix. Are you still watching? <laughs> <laughs> Very judgmental. <laughs> All right, kids. Thank you for joining us for this great two-part Wonder Man special. I'm, I hope you had a good time. I know I did. Yeah, absolutely. That is awesome. Awesome. And once again, I'm going to once again I'm going to assemble the old men Avengers again if when Lilf goes on vacation. So <laughs> I've been for more Wonder Man as well. I mean, there's plenty. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a old... cool uh, Wonder Man special from the eighties, like a one shot. Yeah, yes. it has a, like a Bill Sienkiewicz cover on it, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was really good, too. And then there, were, I think there was a miniseries, what was it, late 90s, early 2000s, Him and the Beast, yeah. Mm. Oh, yes, yeah. I want to read that, I haven't read that. And there's a Peter David one as well, the five-parter, um, which is pretty good. It's all about his immortality. So stay tuned for more Wondercast, kids, I don't know when, but... That's right, we can cover a lot more. Whenever we can sneak it past Lil Hellfire, good night. <laughs> <laughs>